Um, I think sometimes I wasn't actually pressing it like hard enough because I would press it and then I could still feel a bit of pain. So, um, so yeah. So I, if you do have one of them, just make sure you you press it really really hard. And I remember hearing this woman absolutely scream like screaming like she was being attacked or something. And I was saying, oh my god, like why she hasn't had an epidural, has she? Why isn't she having an epidural? This is amazing. Like why doesn't she just do it? Why is she doing this just her? And the heavy was like laughing at me. And yeah, and then we were just like chatting, chatting to the midwife, like she was really, really nice and just really kind of calm. Um and then she went out the room and came back and she was like, oh yeah, the doctor's going to be coming along soon. And like we didn't think anything of it, we just thought, oh, it's just maybe just to check and maybe because I've had the epidural or just to see how, you know, how things were going. So the, um, the doctor came in, so she hadn't said anything else before that. The doctor came in and said, we're not happy with babies. I can't remember if he said heartbeat or or what we see with baby, I think I think he said. So he said, we are going to, if it's okay, we're going to do a test. Um, and it's a little, two little scratches on baby's head. And um, when we do, and it's a blood test and we get the results back within minutes and he said because on the monitor they like to see baby's um, heartbeat kind of go up down up down obviously with contractions it goes up a little bit more but the baby's heartbeat was kind of going like up up down 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 up up down. it was just really irregular and it's not what they wanted to to see and they also do um they spray like a cool um solution on the baby's head um to see how it reacts if it's kind of in distress i think this is what it was um i just remember them doing it and i can't remember 100% what it you know what exactly what it was all about so they said, you know, are you okay with us doing this? And I said, yeah, that, obviously that's fine. If the baby's in distress, then, you know, we need to know what to do about it. They did that and um, I didn't didn't feel anything. It, it was, I mean, you're not 100 like, percent numb down there. You can still feel things, um, but it's just not uncomfortable. So I could feel them doing the cold, the cool air. And obviously they did the little test. So... They said um, if the rating, if the, the tests come back and that it's either too high or too low, I think it was too high, um, we'll be taking you in for an emergency C-section. Um, and if not, uh, Scarlet crying. She's awake from her nap, aren't you? Want to say hello to everyone? Uh -huh. Don't know if you can see it. Oh, that was a good bear. I have to be as quick as I can because I know she's going to get grouchy. Um. So um. So yeah. So they said if the um results come back um, and they're too high, we'll be taking you for an emergency C-section. And obviously, if they're okay, then we won't. So within a few minutes, the results came back and. I just remember them there being like nine people in the room and them all kind of mm. I'm talking about you. Yeah. Oh I'm talking about you. Um she's really windy so she's not very happy. Um and yeah, there being just loads of people in the room and them kind of doing things and kind of taking the bed away from the wall and they said you know the, they took two rate two tests one was over average and the other one was like above average and the guy said that they've had three emergency c-sections that night with the same things happening so he said you know it's just made me really really cautious so we're going to take you down and they give some scrubs for hubby so Luke put on some scrubs um, it just happened so so quickly they were like have you got any metal and obviously I had my rings and my earrings so 
I literally like was oh I was taking them off while they were wheeling me down um the corridor oh um and they took me in the room oh well, that was a good trump and then they put up like a, a bar thing like you see the guy that did the epidural comes along and he just kind of gives you oh darling gives you um, a top up and he sprays this kind of freeze spray on your legs and all on your body kind of up to your chest so little Scarlett was getting grouchy so I'm just feeding her so that's why you can't see kind of Scarlet or any lower. <laughs> the midwife was there saying, um, you know, you'll see your baby soon, we're going to deliver your baby. And that just felt like literally forever that she kept saying that. And she um, said, right, if when we deliver your baby, if the baby cries, we'll put her straight onto your chest. And if not, obviously, we need to, you know, do what we need to do with baby first and then we'll bring her back. So I can just feel like like a load of tugging and kind of your body's moving around. That was, Hubby said, you know, they were properly like tugging at you. You you know, you were kind of bouncing around everywhere. So they obviously delivered Scarlett and there wasn't any crying. So I don't know if the cord was wrapped around her neck or if she wasn't breathing. Um, I don't know if anybody said at the time, but we can't remember actually exactly what was wrong, but they took her straight off. All we saw was them weeing her off, obviously, in, in the little kind of plastic cots. We didn't even see her. We couldn't even see her in the cot. And I thought they would just take her off to kind of one side in the room, but they took her off to a whole separate room. And it felt like 10 minutes that we didn't hear her cry. It felt like forever, obviously. Me and her, we were just looking at each other and we were just really silent. And then we heard her cry, so we were like, oh, phew and they brought her over and they put her on my chest but she was like right here on my chest so I couldn't see her so I kept saying to hubby like I want to see her face I want to see her face and um so I was like hubby you, like Luke you hold I, I want to see her face and so I, I could see her face I was looking at her I was so tired at this point and I was like trying to keep my eyes open to stare at her and look at her but my, my eyes just kept like kind of like just closing and then they said right well we're gonna finish off with clean you up and your hubby and baby can go in the recovery room and then you'll you'll meet them in there so obviously they went off and they did what they needed to do with me and cleaning me up it's the weirdest thing because they put you on a, another bed so as they're kind of pulling you over you can see your legs, but you can't feel them, and it's just the weirdest thing, the weirdest thing in the world. It's like your body has been cut off in half, and the bottom end of your body is like over in the other side of the room, and you can see it. It's just, it's so weird. So they took me off to recovery where Luke and Scarlett were, and they put her straight onto my chest straight away. Like, because I was like numb, like quite high up, I was kind of like slumped to one side and it was like really uncomfortable. So I had to get hubby and the midwife to kind of move me back because I felt like I was going to fall off the bed. And oh, so she was born at 2.37 in the morning. So my contraction started at 2 o'clock in the afternoon on the Saturday and I had her on the Sunday at 2.37 so it was 12 hours um, and 37 minutes all together um, and then they take you to um, another ward for obviously people who've all had their babies which is actually right next door to the ward that I was on previously and they get you to breastfeed straight away so they help you breastfeed and they were super super helpful and kind of like all I wanted to do was go to sleep but they kind of really you know we don't push you into breastfeeding but because I wanted to breastfeed so obviously they want baby to have a feed before um you know straight after you have given birth and hubby had to go because obviously the visiting hours weren't at that time it was nine o'clock in the morning so that the visiting hours were open so he came back at nine so hubby went and I fed Scarlett and then went to sleep and we were so I had her on the 
We had the induction on the Saturday. I had our on the Sunday morning at 2.30. We went home on the Tuesday, Sunday, on the Tuesday or the Monday. I think we went home on the Tuesday, so we were there for two nights. Hang on, Sunday, Monday, yeah, Tuesday. As far as um, kind of pain and everything, uh, it, yeah, it's been uncomfortable. It is hard, obviously, picking up a baby and trying to do normal things when you don't have any stomach muscles left. So, so yeah, but I probably will do a separate video on kind of the cesarean and, and, and all of that. But we are good. Please leave a comment if you would like me to tell you any other details or you want to ask me any questions about anything that I haven't kind of already told you. And I'm so sorry that this is so late and I'll try and um, update you as much as possible. So thank you for sticking with me and I will speak to you soon.